As we all know, an unfortunate fact of nature is that when someone attempts to make a film adaptation of a well-known story, it's very unlikely to represent the actual story and will probably look more like a back alley abortion in a dumpster that's on fire. And so it was with the parody clown film pretending to be a metal biopic that is Lords of Chaos, or as I like to call it, Edge Lords of Cringe. One of the most well-known mythos in the metal underground is the story of Norwegian black metal, particularly the case of mayhem, murder, and some crispy churches. To give you a quick Cliff Notes version of the story, once upon a time in Norway, a spooky and evil metal band called Mayhem formed and helped craft the grimy look and sound of what would become pure Norwegian black metal. The band, however, became less known for their actual music and more for the trail of bodies and ashes they'd left behind. To sum it up quickly, their original singer blew his head off, some of the members and their friends in other bands set several churches on fire, and someone who joined the band briefly ended up murdering the founding guitarist and defining himself as underground metal's Voldemort. You know, just your typical good Christian lads. This story has been a legend in the heavy metal world, with many thinking it means Mayhem are the most evil band of all time, and that their members are all evil true Satanists, and what true metal is supposed to be. And this film, Edgelords of Cringe, depicts that as if they were all some dumb, spoiled, nervous dorks from the suburbs of Santa Monica having a dick measuring contest on Halloween. I'm not gonna give a complete breakdown of this entire movie, but having rewatched it again recently during a spout of masochism, holy shit, it was even worse than I remember. I watched it with a good friend who grew up loving black metal and knowing this whole story, but hadn't seen this film yet because she thought it was just inaccurate. She didn't realize that she was about to suffer through the black metal equivalent of the room. You're tearing me apart, Varg! So headbang the like button, stage dive on the subscribe button, and windmill the video to your friends. If you're a fan of the channel and you'd like to show your support, consider becoming a member. Memberships are only 99 cents a month, and each one really helps me toward my goal of creating a life-size Godzilla to invade Canada. And now let's dissect this piece of shit. To start off with, Mayhem are a Norwegian band. The film is set in Norway. All of the characters were born in Norway, and this is how these brutal occult creatures sound in this movie. All they do is celebrate life and party. They should just call it life metal. <laughs> We play black metal. True Norwegian black metal. About as Scandinavian as a skateboard. Believe me, I know that us Americans can get confused and frightened over hearing other languages. Did it even cross your mind you could speak English with a Norwegian accent? I don't know about you guys, but I always pictured Euronymous sounding like a Californian doing his homework. The fucking church. They're oppressing us with their kindness and their goodness. Hate them in their churches. We should burn them down. The accents are but just a part of the whole souffle of shit acting farted onto the screen here. Every single person you see comes off like they're just saying words out loud without any conviction to them and then are waiting for the next cue to say the next line. And we're gonna bump into each other. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? <clears throat> oh! <clears throat> Why? Why did- Hold on, hold on, hold on! Yeah, cause if you got stabbed in the chest repeatedly, you would just stand there confused and just be like, Well, well why? What's up, man? Thought we were bros. Just leave, okay? It's okay. It's okay. He just sounds like he has to take a really painful shit. It does not sound like he's scared for his life. We can make a- We can make a thing out of this. Oh, what thing? Just think about it for a second, okay? He's acting like he has a stomach ache. We could spread a rumor that you almost killed me. This could make us look really fucking evil. I have enough time to stand here casually and be like, let's think of a whole plan and have a conversation while my guts are pouring out over my chest. Yeah, you had a knife puncture you several times, but you're not bleeding much through your white shirt. It's, it's really smart. It's fucking genius. And then he gets stabbed again. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Oh, now you've gone and done it now, mister. What are you looking for? A knife so you can kill me and make a snuff film out of the whole thing? Stop talking through your nose, you gnome. This part of the film is absolutely baffling. I want a genuine explanation from whoever wrote this garbage. In the middle of stabbing someone to death, Varg decides to stop and make a nice, glass of chocolate milk, calmly stir it, 
and then savor every single sip of it while Euronymous fumbles around standing there not really doing much kind of forgetting that he's bleeding doesn't have any blood on his pants for being stabbed in his chest many times who the fuck thought this should be in the movie it's not even a quick moment where he just grabs it and sips it he's he's taking his time he's filming a Nesquik commercial while Euronymous is just staggering in the background there who thought of this whoever wrote this scene is fucking retarded <laughs> there's never been any rumor anywhere at all that Varg stopped to have a nice glass of chocolate milk putting his fingerprints all over the glass for evidence and then casually went back and be like all right stabby stab time when you're burning churches and murdering people it's important to keep up your strength and did you know chocolate milk is an important source of calcium mayhem brought to you by cocoa milk so you want me to believe that during this whole moment while Varg is standing there making a nice balanced glass of chocolate milk Euronymous is standing there bleeding and never once goes hey someone help I've been really trying, baby, trying to hold back this feeling for so long. Yes, while murdering someone he knew, I'm sure Varg looked bored and didn't look serious or anxious or determined or angry or even scared, just bored. Maybe he's crashing from the sugar rush from all that cocoa milk. The only scene in the movie that I thought was actually well executed was when Foss stabs that guy in the forest, pun intended. This was the only part of the movie where the characters acted in a somewhat realistic way that felt believable. So credit where it's due, but the rest of the film is like this. You only put me in the band to get attention. The album's almost finished. It's gonna be big. World tour, everything. Tour? I thought you were true Norwegian black metal. I fucking invented it. And now you betray it. You're a hypocrite. We should be making true black metal music for a select few. Tours are for posers. Worse than the rejected theater kids living in the Warner Brothers Studios backlot dumpster. This shit is atrocious. Though it's hard to tell what's worse here, the actual acting quality or the character's depictions. Some metalheads out there have very strong opinions about these Norwegian black metalers. Some are Team Euronymous, some are Team Varg, and personally, I'm on Team I Don't Give a Shit. I'm all for showing the more ridiculous and goofy aspects of black metal, such as a bunch of teenagers playing with capes and makeup in the woods trying to look spooky. But this this film goes out of its way to portray these guys as complete whiny ass lame cuck dipshits. Euronymous is like a bored suburban heroin addict trying too hard to be cool. Don't get me wrong, the real Euronymous certainly portrayed himself as far more menacing than he actually was, but he wasn't this much of a fucking dork. Necro Butcher is thankfully not in the film very much and doesn't have any particularly stupid moments, although he does look kind of Mexican for some reason. Hellhammer is also hardly in the film and looks like someone wearing a rocker costume they bought from the Halloween store. The actor playing Dead actually looked pretty good. He also sounded like a dumb California kid who grew up under a staircase, but appearance-wise, he did look quite a bit like him, so fair. But then there's the curious case of Varg Vikernes, who in real life was a full-of-himself, cocky but stern and intelligent extremist who wanted to spread a message of fear. So naturally, here the film depicts him as a bumbling, chubby, retarded soy boy who practically begs others for approval. Like I said before, I don't really care about Varg, so I have no problem with the film not depicting him as some mysterious Sauron-like figure of black metal and showing how the actual human really was behind the imagery, but unholy Jesus fucking black metal Christ, Varg wasn't this much of an awkward loser. I mean, you're, you're a Satanist, right? Yeah. They constantly have him bumping into things and stumbling around, looking timid and scared, saying really stupid shit. All those death metal kids with their stupid morbid angel t-shirts are making a trend out of something that was meant to instill fear. We should put him in the showers and uh, gas him to death. <laughs> the real Varg would say intelligent sounding crazy shit, but this Varg is just dumb. Of course, the real Varg Vikernes hates this depiction of him for different reasons, <laughs> but I think that everyone can agree that making Varg this lame was certainly uh, a choice. A choice that made me realize something about halfway through the movie I went, oh, this is a parody film. It's a joke. It's intended to make fun
fun of all these guys, not share the actual story. Lords of Chaos is in the same vein as Spinal Tap and Dewey Cox. Now it makes sense. The pitch meeting to this went something like, hey, wouldn't it be funny to make fun of all those weird black metal idiots? Now I get it. The film was always intended to be as faithful as a $2 horror. Hell, that might explain why for a film about the birth of black metal, there's barely any black metal music in it. Small parts of some Mayhem songs that have been re-recorded play here and there, but if you're unfamiliar with their songs, you won't really have a better understanding of them after watching this. In fact, there's a lot of weird awkward silence during in-between scenes that probably could have done for some atmospheric black metal. When they're celebrating in front of a burning church, what song is playing at this moment? Some slow trance sounding boring shit. The end of the film, the big scene where Varg kills Euronymous. Same thing, weird slow film score music. During this dumb awkward scene of silence, I just kept thinking to myself, black metal, black metal. How do you forget to put black metal in your black metal movie? So that all made me realize that this isn't an attempt to make an actual dramatized depiction of real events. This is just any 90s Walmart bin wannabe cool kid C film that's wearing corpse paint. Overall, the film is about as accurate as a blind marksman that maintains about the same acting quality throughout the film as Steven Seagal. If you go into this film not knowing the true story of Mayhem, don't worry, you still won't know it when you finish the film. The only way to get any entertainment out of this trash pile is if you already know the story of Mayhem and would like to see it portrayed as a Saturday Night Live sketch. I mean, for fuck's sake, The Dirt is a far more accurate and entertaining band movie than Edgelords of Cringe. So if you're a black metal fan, a horror fan, a movie lover, or just looking for something fun to watch, then I'd strongly recommend that you watch anything else. For more from me, check out my band Dark Insanity. You can find us on Instagram, on Spotify, on all of the streaming platforms, on Bandcamp as well. We have our EP Rabid Psychosis out now. Subscribe to my second channel, Why It's Metal Podcast Clips, where I'll be uploading segments from my live podcast and podcasts that I do guest appearances on. We've got merch available for the channel and for the band. Now you can get White's Metal t-shirts, Savior of Metal hats, Dark Insanity t-shirts, Dark Insanity weed bags. We've got everything. Links for all of my stuff can be found in the description of this video. Anyway, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video.